Welcome to our broadcast tonight. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad that you're able to be with us and to open the Word of God with us. I wanted to invite you to open the Word of God to the book of Luke in chapter number 12 as we get started tonight. Luke 12 and verse 13. This is the conclusion of a series that we began at the beginning of the year on uh, God's Bible principles for personal finance and for money and how we interact with finance and money in the Christian life. Uh, God gives a lot of direction around those things and he teaches us how to tactically and how to emotionally handle the resources that he's given us and how to use the opportunities that God has given us for his glory. And I think that with the situation of life right now, this is, is timely. Certainly when we began this series, we didn't have an understanding of where economically our nation would be headed at this point. Certainly in the spring of 2020, things are looking a lot different than they did a number of weeks ago when we started this series. Now we're into uh, the first Sunday of April, and so it's been four months since the beginning of the year that uh, we've come through those first three months. Really, this is the fourth, beginning of the fourth month of the year. And so we've come through those first three months of the year, and a lot has changed. But as we look at the financial situation of our world today, it's helpful for us as God's people to come at our finances with a godly perspective. And so I wanted to give you a brief recap. If you have not tuned in to the previous message of the series, I would encourage you to check out all those messages on our YouTube channel and on our podcast as well. At uh, the beginning of the year, we started out with the message called, Is Money Evil? Is there a disconnect between personal finance as a Christian and godliness? Uh, is it wrong for a Christian to have money? Is it wrong for a Christian to acquire money or to pursue money? What's those sort of balances? Secondly was the proper use of means. Are we to just live by faith or is there godly strategy and use of resources to, to acquire the right direction and use of that money? The third thing we talked about was money mindsets because the money mindsets are so much more important than the money methodologies. The first four messages of the series really dealt with mindset and philosophy more than methodology and practice. The fourth was a look at the life of Esau and how he said, I have enough. And so the title of the fourth was, I have enough. Contentment and um, fullness in the grace of God. Okay, so those were the first four that dealt with philosophy of, of the mindset of money. And then we've had so far six already dealing with some of the practicalities. Today's gonna to be the seventh in dealing with some of those practical ideas around finance. The first was how to get money. Next was how to keep money. Then how to use money, how to manage money, how to invest money. And then the last time was how to give money. And so these are all principles of how to manage the money with some guidelines from the scripture that, that touch on all of these themes. And I hope that the messages have been a blessing to you if you've heard them. And that if you haven't heard them, that, that you tune into those and that they would be a help to you. The last message of this year is I was I wasn't really intending, but but I really felt that God was directing to address this as well. And so though I had only expected to have 10 messages in the in this series, here we are today with number 11. And that is dealing with what God's word has to say regarding inheritances. And it might seem like a, a very small topic of life, but it certainly is referenced hundreds of times in scripture. We're not but going to scratch the surface on that today. But I did want to deal with this because I felt like God was certainly leading in that direction, that this was something he wanted addressed in this series. So let's start off by looking at our text, Luke 12 and starting at verse 13. We're just going to begin by looking at two verses. And one of the company said unto him, Master, this is speaking to Jesus, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge? or a divider over you. Would you join me in prayer? Father, thank you for the grace you give to us. And thank you for this privileged opportunity again to open your word with freedom, and with opportunity, with your hand being upon us. May your spirit speak to each who hears your word opened today. We thank you that this medium is not able to limit your power. And though we are not in presence physically with each other, yet your hand touches each of our hearts as your word is preached, that it will not return void. We claim that promise by your grace today and ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to briefly address this issue of inheritances here in Scripture. Uh, so I've got three points tonight. The first point is this, inheritances. An inheritance is a powerful thing. And I, I don't need to really define the term for you because I think we all understand the importance of an inheritance and how it's passed from one who is deceased to those who are remaining behind. But it, it's a powerful thing to leave an inheritance. An inheritance can transform lives 
for good or for ill. Uh, transformation comes through inheritances, and that's a privilege that all of us have as we look at the lives that God has given to us. And certainly, financially, this is a big uh, area of accountability before God. I mentioned that the word inheritance, oh, I didn't mention this directly, but the word inheritance specifically uh, shows up hundreds of times in Scripture. Now, I didn't look at all the iterations of that, of different forms of that word, but just the word inheritance shows up hundreds of times in Scripture. If you wanted to take a thorough, in-depth study of all of those later, you certainly could. Uh, most of those are found in the Old Testament. Certainly God, when dealing with the nation of Israel, uh, dealt with them very much through their family line and the descendants of that family line from Jacob and his 12 sons, the tribes of Israel. And so there was a lot in the Old Testament about inheritances through the nation of Israel because this family nation had things to pass down. And God's relationship with Israel was very much connected to these inheritances, specifically of the land upon which they lived. And so inheritances are a big part of God's relationship with Israel, but also an important aspect, even as we see here today in the New Testament. It's an important issue to be addressed scripturally. Now, as we deal with the, with the, the, the practice around inheritances, it's important for us to understand that there's a broad range of mindsets when it comes to inheritances. And I have heard all kinds of different perspectives on inheritances and how they're to be managed and whether they're to be had and what to do with them and who's to give them and who's to get them. There are a lot of different opinions and perspectives about inheritances. Uh, I have heard uh, financial advisors talk about people in their retirement years trying to manage their, their resources in retirement so that they maximize their enjoyment of those financial resources to the point to try to try to manage that to such a degree that the money runs out just after they do to be just you know delicate about it um, but the idea that they're recommending is uh you want to basically make your money last just long enough that it will just barely outlive you but that's not that's what we're going to see in the scriptural perspective of inheritances that we should just you know use everything up use every last penny and leave nothing to those who come behind us but the Bible will teach us rather the contrary. For example, in Proverbs 13 and verse 22, it says, A good man, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. And so it is good to leave something behind for those who follow after us. So particularly that verse says, A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children children so even to his grandchildren and so it's wise and good for godly people to have something to leave behind them for the benefit of those who come after this is the, this is the idea of an inheritance that they can leave something for those generations that will follow after them what great wisdom there is in each of our lives when we can look past ourselves and see the future to see the generations who come behind us and understand the influence that we can have upon their situation of life and the blessing that we can be to those who will come after us to make a difference in our family tree. Don't be the last branch that bears fruit. Uh, leave something for those who come behind. To be able to leave something for those who are coming after. It's interesting also it says the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just I think it's wise for us when we talk about inheritances too, to be particularly particular to prioritize leaving an inheritance to those who are doing right and living justly. To be able to leave something, I'll let you in on a secret, to be able to leave something, you have to have something to leave, <laughs> right? <laughs> this isn't rocket science. But when we talk about inheritances and it, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, I, I believe that it should go without saying that if you're going to leave something to your children's children, you have to have something to leave. More than debts and more than brokenness and more than bankruptcies and more than uh, obligations, to leave something for those who come behind you. It's a, a good thing that the scripture encourages to leave something to those who come behind. To be able to leave something, you have to have something to leave. Now, that means that there has to be resources that are not just spent up and used up. Because we've seen already in this series that 
the, the book of Proverbs warns us that there is there is treasure to be desired, desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but the foolish man spendeth it up. He doesn't have anything set aside for the future. And it's wise for us to set aside for the future. Like the ant, remember, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, who having no guide, overseer, or ruler, prepareth her meat in the summer. She works to save for the future. And sometimes we're working to save for our own future, and that's scriptural and wise. But also, we're able then to save for the future beyond ourselves to give to those who will come after us, to give them a leg up, to get some success and stability in their own lives. There's value in giving that. Proverbs 19 and verse 14 speaks to some of the types of inheritances that are, that are common and normal and valuable. It says, house and riches are the inheritance of fathers. And it says a prudent wife is from the Lord. And certainly we thank God for what he gives, but oftentimes when it comes to inheritances, an inheritance from a human father would be something like a house or riches, property or resources, finances. Those are the sort of things that we would normally talk about when we talk about finance. Now, one thing that we do want to address here too is the, the importance of that planning to, to, to be able to invest in the lives that come after us as well. I wanted to give you a New Testament perspective on this as well. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth in his second epistle to them in chapter 12 and verse 14. And he, he's dealing a little bit with his ministry mindset to help the church of Corinth. He was sort of, as a spiritual father, uh, trying to raise up these spiritual children to spiritual maturity. And he said to them, he said, I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours, but you. He said, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm, I care about you, not your stuff. And then he says this, he says, for the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. The idea there, I believe, is that he's conveying is, in a household, you don't expect the kids to save up to care for the parents. It's the other way around. <laughs> the parents are the ones who have the resources to take care of their children. Now, even as those children then grow, the normal situation of life should be that those parents are looking at the opportunity then to invest in those children. Now, I understand that there are situations at time where uh, a parent is in a situation of need, and 1 Timothy 5 deals with that, where he says, you know, for example, if there's a widow lady who needs some support and help, he said, boy, her kids ought to take care of her if they can. Uh, but, but generally speaking, the idea in Scripture is that a good man will leave an inheritance to his children's children. And that there are these, these directions where, the, you know, the children are not laying up for the parents, but the parents for the children. And I know that, that culturally and societally, sometimes there's some disconnect between those things, where sometimes we have a different perspective on that. But scripturally, the Word of God teaches us the wisdom and godliness of leaving an inheritance to our children and our children's children. So this is the first thing that we see here, inheritance. Now, this is sort of by way of introduction, talking about inheritances and the practicality of of saving and planning for the future, not only our own future, but also having a plan and a strategy in our personal finances, whereby we're able not only to take care of our lives, but also to leave something for those who come behind us. Certainly, um, a godly man will provide in such a way as God enables him to, to be able to provide for a wife that may be left behind if he was not no longer around. Also, then those parents can lay up something that will help provide for their children to give them a, a, a bit of a boost ahead when their parents are no longer around. But all of that giving us some direction, I wanted us also to come back to where Jesus was here in Luke chapter number 12. We started with this, this man coming to Jesus and saying, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus' response, man, who made me a judge or divider over you? Is this my job to sort of settle your petty settle your petty squabbles over finances and money? The interesting thing is that the second aspect of inheritances I wanted to address this morning or this evening is that uh, we're dealing with not just inheritances but with idolatry. Because the interesting thing is that too often times when we deal with money, again, we come back to this issue of the mindset, and even when dealing here with this, the situation of these two men and the inheritance that was being distributed, it became a problem. And the interesting thing is that both brothers may have had the exact same problem. 
Because one came to Jesus and said, he's not giving me the money that he should give me. Well, the other guy could be standing there saying, I want to keep the money that I've got. I don't have to give it to you. And they could both have the same issue. Because I wanted you to see Jesus' response in verse, not just verse 14. He said, who may be a judge or divider over you? But then in verse 15, and he said unto them, take heed. All right, listen up. Pay attention. This is important. Watch for this. And beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And so these two men uh, both could have had the exact same problem. I'm not sure about the brother who was withholding, whether he had a just reason to do so, but I think it's fair to assume that probably both of them were dealing with covetousness here. Covetousness here. That they both had the same aspect of valuing money more than their relationship. Valuing money more than the things that were truly important. So Jesus answered in verse 15 to the situation, as he who sees their hearts, he says, guys, listen, pay attention. Take heed of this. Beware of covetousness. Beware. Maybe you've ever been somewhere knocking on doors or going out soul winning or uh, visiting people, and sometimes you see these signs, beware of dog. I don't know about you, but I, I take those signs fairly seriously. <laughs> I've had enough scenarios where I've been in somebody else's property or knocking on their door or visiting folks, and I see that beware of dog sign. I've had enough scenarios where I start to understand, I'm going to watch for a dog. <laughs> There's a beware of dog sign. I'm assuming they probably put that there because I should really beware of the dog. Um, I have been chased by enough dogs. I have been bitten by enough dogs. Uh, I don't intend to repeat that any more than necessary. And that's basically what Jesus is saying here. He says, watch out, beware, take heed, beware of covetousness. You know, covetousness is worse than a dog. A dog will bite you, but boy, covetousness can poison your soul. And quite frankly, it's shameful to say it, but this is an area that really needs to be addressed when it comes to inheritances. Because there's, there's different aspects wherein this covetousness can occur. Certainly, there can be covetousness amongst those who would receive an inheritance. And that's what we see with this man who came to Jesus. He was covetous of the inheritance his brother had received. Whether he received it justly or unjustly, I couldn't tell you. But he was certainly covetous of what his brother had. Also, his brother may have likely been covetous as well when it came to wanting to keep as much inheritance as he could. But covetousness also can come in the, the aspect of those parents as well, who perhaps want to use and enjoy as much of those resources as possible and, and leave nothing or next to nothing to those who come after. So covetousness can really be spread all around in the scenario surrounding inheritances. And the Bible tells us a couple of places in Scripture it compares covetousness with idolatry. And that's why I'm talking about idolatry in the second aspect of our study tonight is idolatry. It is about loving money and worshiping money and worshiping things more than we love and worship and value God. And that ought not so to be. So we ought not to be greedy when it comes to guarding what we've got or getting what somebody else has. Covetousness and greed can consume us. Don't fight over what you get or what you didn't get but rather be thankful and rejoice in what God has given and blessed you with and avoid conflicts around these inheritances. Oh, there's so many problems around inheritances that can cause so much contention and so much confusion and so much conflict. There's so many simple things that can be set in place that help prevent those sort of conflicts. Things like having a written will that's clearly directed and clearly defined where it's, it's easily understood and, and followed through on. Um, things like, um, not waiting until after you're dead for everybody to find out what's in the will. That can create a lot of contention after the fact because they can argue with each other instead of arguing with the person who created the will. Um, if you tell people before you pass what the plan is, that you're much less likely to have conflict and problems because if they're going to have conflict and problem, then they're having the conflict and problem while you're alive. And guess what? People who have conflict and problem over the will while you're still alive, they don't have to worry about the will because they're not going to be in it. <laughs> and that can help cut down on some of the conflict. But certainly we want to avoid these issues of covetousness when it comes to inheritances. There are so many things far more important than the money, okay? 
this is why we dealt with for several messages in the beginning of the series the mindset more than the methodology because if you have the wrong mindset about money methodology will only take you deeper into the messed up hole that your heart is in okay and so don't worship money don't value inheritances beyond their true value to to prioritize them beyond what's necessary so we've seen inheritances we've seen the idolatry that can surround those inheritances but thirdly and lastly i wanted to talk about influences influences as i talk about inheritances maybe some of you will be listening to this and thinking i don't really have much to leave anybody it's not really an issue for me I, I, you know maybe you're getting later in your years and you think i don't have much and i don't have much time to save up much to leave behind if i started even now and maybe you might be feeling bad about yourself and thinking it's too late or, or uh, getting down on yourself for poor decisions you've already made i would say to that just make the good best decisions you can going forward from where you are and whatever has happened uh, let let the past be the past and learn from it uh, but uh, but make good decisions for the future from wherever you are but whether you have much to leave or whether you don't expect to have much to leave either way don't overvalue the stuff that you leave behind whether it's the you know houses and riches like you talked about in proverbs 19 14 or or whether it's those those you know um, financial things that sometimes uh, we have investments or things that we might leave behind uh, in financial things don't overvalue the possessions right because in verse 15 this is what jesus said for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses you know it's not the stuff that we should be most worried about when it comes to inheritances it's not the finances we ought to seek to leave a legacy beyond just finance a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children and i believe that that's talking about money but i also believe that's talking about the intangibles that we leave behind us certainly uh, many of us have children that were reared in our home or children that we are leaving uh, a legacy to but also there are those who follow after us in our spiritual relationships you know we may have led somebody to christ or been one who mentored and discipled those who are coming after us in the christian life those who come behind us we want to leave a legacy beyond just the tangible certainly leave those tangible things where you can as well but even beyond that i believe a far more important legacy we leave is not just the finances but the faith and the walk with god and the person that has lived as an example now i made a point in in our first point and this is what i said to be able to leave something you have to have something to leave the same is true when it comes to our influences to be able to leave something worth having you have to have something to leave right and so it's not about just uh, wanting and wishing good things for those who follow after us but to then build the life that we need to have so that we can leave something behind us and we ought to keep this in our hearts and minds knowing not the day of our death and how long we have to influence those who come behind us to live every day in such a way that our legacy and our lifestyle and our perspectives and our values are things that those who come after us whether biologically or relationally or sequentially that those who follow after us chronologically in one way or the other we'll be able to pick up where we've left off and you've heard maybe the phrase standing on the shoulders of giants be the giant that your kids stand on on your shoulders and from where you have lived they go to the next level of their walk with god so there are several things that i would encourage each of us to focus on leaving these type of inheritances certainly leave tangible things of value that's good and that's that's a blessing to those who come behind but also these intangibles uh, leave to those who come after you leave christ to them now you can't make your kids get saved and nobody's saved because they had christian parents or because they had godly parents but leave them uh, the reality of christ in your life that they know you're a christian that they know you love the savior they know your gospel testimony they know the reality you're a faith in god 
bequeath them a relationship with Christ, that you have left a legacy of true Christian faith. That your relationship with Christ is real to them. As real to them, maybe, as it was to you. That they see the reality of that in your life. And that's something we ought to live day in and day out. You can't whip that up on your deathbed and hope it sticks for the next generation. This is something that you prove day in and day out all the days of your life. Your Christian relationship with God. Leave an example there. Next, we ought also to leave good character. Good character. Principles of godliness. Principles of right living. Courage. Conviction. Compassion. Strength. Um, the, the values of a Christian that we have good behavior. Good character. Determination. Hard work. Attentiveness. Creativity. Diligence that we ought to leave those character qualities in our lives as shining examples of how those who are to follow after us will live. You know, they'll follow our example for good or for ill. And that's why I said at the beginning of this study that inheritance is such a powerful thing because it can be, it can transform lives for good or for evil. And so our lives can transform the lives of others. The legacy we leave can be a powerful influence for generations because of the legacy we leave. So leave Christ to them. Leave them with a good example of godly character. Leave to them your values, the things that are important to you in your walk with God. Things like faith in the Lord, things like family, things like honesty, things like love and compassion, things like the, the values of our spiritual walk with God and the freedoms we enjoy in Christ. Leave those values behind to prioritize the things that are important in our walk with the Lord, that the right values are left, exampled in our lives. Also, wisdom. That we would convey the wisdom of God's truth and God's word, the wisdom that God has given to us. We would leave that behind us, not just to hoard everything to ourselves and just, oh, I'll make my own decisions. Everybody else has got to figure out their own problems. No, but to leave the wisdom behind that God has given to us. And also to leave a good direction. I've at times been concerned when I see people making certain decisions in their lives because I think to myself that the decision that they've made concerns me. But it also, I am greatly concerned by the direction that they're going because I expect that those who come after them, not just that they will make that same decision, but that they will continue in the same direction that, that the parents or the previous generation have gone. And they may end up much farther down the road in that same direction. Leave a good direction, a direction toward God, towards grace, towards faithfulness, towards godliness, towards a good Christian living and values. Leave a good direction. But also, when it comes to those influences that we have inherited from those who went before us. Don't squander what we've gotten. A couple pages over in your Bible, in Luke 15, one of the most famous stories in Scripture, verses 11 to 13, it says, Jesus said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. A godly father left a good inheritance to his son. Who's this father? Picture? what well, he pictures our heavenly father and his generosity and goodness to give us an inheritance in Christ. He divided into them his living, verse 13, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. We have been given so much when it comes to inheritances. Whether it's a financial inheritance, certainly it's important to be wise with that, but how much more with the inheritance of godly influences, that, that the good heritage that we have spiritually in those who have gone before us, uh, whether it's good influences from our earthly parents or good influences from spiritual leaders who have gone before us, we need to not squander and waste and be prodigal with those, with those blessings that we have received. We need to take those and, and uh, accentuate them in our lives to, to magnify the influence of those things in our lives to such a degree that we can then pass them on to the next generation, a good example and a godly testimony that will carry the next generation through to great victory in Christ. So I wanted us to be challenged and encouraged to certainly plan ahead 
financially, be responsible in such a way that we're not only planning for our future, but we're planning in such a way that our our future is strong in such a way that that our future influence will outlast financially even our own time in this life. That we can have an influence even for generations to come. But how much more so we ought spiritually to value the things that God values. Not idolatry over money and things, but to value the influence that we have for Christ in the lives of those who come after us. We, each of us, will leave this world one day, one way or another. But we each need to leave this world better because we were here. And we need to leave a positive legacy to our heirs in our family and our heirs in our faith. May God challenge us and encourage each of us to live a life whereby the legacy we leave, whether it's financial legacy or our faith legacy, that we will be leaving a positive legacy for those who come after us. That our family tree, in our physical family or in our spiritual family, that the legacy we leave behind us will be deep and powerful and impactful in a positive way that we can really impact lives for God's glory. May God be glorified through that as we look to the future. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the grace you've given again to open again your word tonight. I pray you'd speak to our hearts to help us to leave a godly legacy, to leave an influence behind us for those who will come behind us in the days ahead. Lord, use us, direct us. May our lives be challenged and enabled by your word. That as we seek after you, you would be glorified in all these things. Guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. God bless you. May we have a great week.